Okay, so I've been around um, done all the parking plans. Um, what I need to do now is do all the get in there and do all the really fine uh, fiddly bits um, with the 240. Um, I find doing doing it at this point is a lot easier than doing it later because I don't really want to do it later. It's really easy to get in there and do all the fun stuff, the easy stuff, um, and then you got to try and rework the the intricate bits and it is quite difficult because you end up messing up your the main surfaces so I find you know do the little pain in the arse bits first and then um, you can do the work on the main the main big surfaces and that seems to work best with my my mentality right So I've um, whizzed around um, the flange area, got good ass. I've gone around the fiddly area, um, made a good start on that. Um, the hardest part I've found is actually just sounding out the ringing. Yeah, the actual um, print layer lines, um, they sound up quite uniformly and they come off quite quickly. It's these ringing lines, the vertical ringing lines seem to be deeper than the, you know, so you've got uh, peaks and troughs that are higher than actual um, layer height lines. So that's what, what, what's taking the time with that, this, this first pass of the, um, with um, 240 sandpaper. Um, so now that I've done that now, I'll um, sand probably this whole, this wing section, again doing probably this panel here first. Um, taking care not to roll this edge here. I want to try and keep this edge really crisp um, with a sort of inlet on the wingers. Um, saddle I suppose you could cause it, uh, call it. Um, so I'll sand this, this area now, um, see how this um, seam comes out and how the seam looks um, and then I'll um, have a chat in a bit. Okay, so we've done our first pass um, with the 240 grid sandpaper. Um, all in all, uh, pretty happy with the way things look. Um, just zoom in a bit. I'll make sure we are focused. Come on. I think that's it. So um, 
the seam, the joints come out great. Um, a little bit high on this side, um, a little bit low on that side. If you remember, we had, we've actually put some tape under these two corners to raise this up. It probably could have done with this raising up a tad more. Um, got a little bit of a gap here. You can see where the um, where the um, dust collects. It's another nice thing about it. Um, so you've got a little bit of a it's just ever so slightly a bit of a, a, a gap for the dust collect there. Um, and we've got another little spot over here. Um, it's, it's absolutely minute. So I'm hoping that once I've done the next uh, pass with the acetone, um, by the time we've sanded it again um, with the 400 grit sandpaper, they'll almost be out. Um, if it's not, I'll just put a tinsy wincy bit of CA on there, let it go off, and then um, and then sand it down. But as you can see, we're nice and smooth. So that's what we are now. That's what we were before. Um, tricky other tricky areas were obviously the, the finicky bits, and then over here. I spend a little bit of time over here because my actual CAD model is slightly wrong, the surface was slightly wrong, and there's a slight dip in this area. Um, that just sounded out fine. Um, so yeah, any mistakes I've made in the CAD actually come through. So sometimes you actually don't see anything on the CAD, CAD if you're not looking close enough. Um, and suddenly when you start sounding, that you realise that, because that's come through a couple of times, and I've actually looked in the CAD model, and I've spotted on the CAD model now that, that fault. It's only minute, um, but yeah, it just sounds out. Um, so what we do now is we'll just make sure it's all completely dusted off, and then we'll hit it with some more acetone. Okay, I won't rescribe the um, line yet. Um, we'll do the acetone pass first, that they go off, and then I'll just rescribe this um, the line for the aeron uh, for, for the sorry for the trading edge. Um, then um, before we sand again and obviously as I'm sanding if I do sand that line out again um, it's this case of me rescribing it um, with the exacto knife so let's, uh, without further ado let's get painting um, so I'm going to give it one more coat all the way around and then future coats will just be the, the main face Taking care not to get any runs on the edges. It's not soaking in so much this time. Um, last time I was soaking in like crazy. It's, uh, it's mental how much it was soaking in. You can actually see where I've sanded through um, with the box. With when I had it on the board, and I was sanding up and down the board a little bit too, went too far. Um, and also, just bear in mind that I've only got I technically 0.7 millimeter shell thickness on there because I've only done two shells. Um, and the main reason why I only did two shells is to save time. Um, I mean, I think the print time for this thing altogether, for this like this assembly. Um, was what um, about 14 hours uh, on the printer, so you know if you add another shell on there, you can you know, probably add another three or four hours onto that. Um, so I'm getting away with it. I, I, I would just say I'm getting away with it. I wouldn't say I'm happy with it, but I'm getting away with it at the moment. One of the guys on the um, Google groups um, was asking about, he, he does um, electric guitars and stuff, and um, he was asking about um, other ways of infilling. So um, I, I've tried infilling with foam, which worked quite well. So, you know, you've got your hollow, your hollow model of this. Um, what you do is leave a, leave a side open. You can pull your expanded foam down there and fills up, um, and that really strengthens things up. But I've also got some um, liquid plastic from um, Smooth On that um, I want to try as well. I'll just make these uh, moulds really, really rugged then. You know, they're not going to crack. Um, but at the moment, while I'm sort of prototyping and stuff, 
I'm not going to worry too much about it. They're easy enough to repair um, if you do get a crack. So I'll join there where we welded. It's kind of, you know, it's almost disappearing. Um, we didn't really pay too much attention to that with the sanding. Okay, so that's all done. Make sure we've got all our dust off because obviously we don't want to be adding that dust into it. Same rule, you know, as soon as you start to feel it stick, uh, move on. You know, so if you feel it starting to stick on the plastic, move on. Make sure you get right down these nasty little bits here. You know, I actually wet it up quite a lot in these little bits, these those little areas there. Ideally, you'd, you'd want to have this that goes on all in one coat, but it just dries so quickly. You can see it going sticky there, so you just move on again. Um, and you get like little runs, it actually, you get actually different depths and stuff, so you can be so careful when you're brushing it on. Um, and ideally, this is where I'd um, vapor bath it, definitely, because you wouldn't have to worry about um, paintbrush marks and runs unless you're really heavy handed in the vapor bath. But, um, so this is all welding it all back together again now, so all the open plastic, um, all the molecules are, are floating again with the acetone and, and joining. So the, um, yeah, the 240 um, sounding is definitely the longest, the one that takes the longest time. Um, Once that's done, the the, the you know the we we'll go to 400 next, and, and I'll sound also this will sound off quite quickly the 400. But, you know you want to make sure you do a good job with the 240 your first um, coarse sand um, paper because um, it pays dividends later on. See, if this was vapor bath now, this would be smooth as a baby bum. But um, you can see the brush lines from the paintbrush in there. Um, so, yeah, I really need to make a bigger vapor bath. Um, and I want to get some sort of hot plate, so I'm not actually using the printer. Um, I'm not actually using the printer for as the um, heat source for it. So, there we have it. I'm just going to put a little bit more. On that bit there. And that's looking pretty good. So we used the 240, uh, sorry, we used 400 grit sandpaper next time. And all we're going to do is basically sand out all the scratches made by the 240 grit. And once that's done, um, we'll give it another coat. Acetone. And it's, that'll probably be its last coat of acetone. Um, otherwise, you're just chasing your tail before we get onto the 800 grit sandpaper. But um, that's good. It's pretty good. You see little areas here where we are a little bit too heavy with the um, acetone. You can see uh, just in here. Um, and I've actually got like a little bit of a ridge, a little bit of a dent with this, you know, where the acetone is. Um, hopefully you'll be able to see that um, just in this area here. Um, so yeah, you better be be careful. You know, when I was applying the acetone, you know, I was wetting it out too much really. It's sort of left a little bit of an indent there. It'll sound out fine. Um, yeah, it'll sound, it won't, it won't be a problem. That'll sound out fine. Um, so yeah, 15, 20 min minutes, we leave that, and then we can start um, with the next bit of sanding. Okay.